<laughs> hey, my friends, Rocket here. Listen, I just wanted to share this, and, it, and this is not, I'm not boasting and bragging about this, but I think that there's, there's a lot of people that doesn't just know how to do certain things, or they don't recognize things. As Christians, we got to be ready to act. I mean, you got to be ready. You can't wait. You know, for instance, say if you're in Walmart and somebody dies on the floor, <laughs> you know, you can't go, hey, put, put him in the freezer and let me go fast and pray about what I should do. And I'll come. you got to be ready. you got to stand on guard. I mean, even you just got to be ready as Christians. So I've got a friend. Had a very troubling thing happen to him yesterday. It's, it's a big mess. We all have issues. And so he began to tell me of all his issues. And I know what's going to happen because believe you me, I've had issues. My wife understands that if I start talking about my issue, before you know it, within 10 minutes, the whole world's going to explode because I just kept speaking negativity, negativity. And I've, I've understood that. So don't speak negativity. You can mention, it's okay to mention, like I got two trucks that, at uh, Kenworth of Birmingham, awesome people, and there's nothing I can do about it except pray and expect. I expect to have favor, and I expect that it's going to be okay. And you know what? It's, it, it is what it is. But for me to talk about it and go on and on, it's not going to do any good. So my friend was doing that, and I was like, mm -mm. now I'm a fix-it guy. I can tell you how to fix your problem real quick. I mean, just real. I mean, I'm real fast about that. And I couldn't fix my own problems. I would talk about those for an hour until I got hold of Jesus' love in my body, <laughs> finally. So, anyway, as we're talking about it, I begin to tell him, hey, how you doing? Look, you, you think somebody's over there. There's nobody over there. I was just saying that. I don't know why. But I begin to tell him about how much Jesus loves him. And I just begin to pour the love of Jesus because I didn't need to go and let him explain his situation any worse than it already is. And I didn't need to condemn him any more than he's already condemned about, well, you know, you're having these problems because of... No, I just poured in the love of Jesus. While doing that, we got him saved. And there's no prayer of, of a sinner's prayer. There's, I, just, I just had him repeat out of Romans, you know, just, I have faith upon Jesus, and I believe God raised him from the dead. And he really believes that. And I said, boom. So it's a process, and I begin to guide him with that. Anyway, he, he comes in this morning, and he's, he's, he's telling my brother, brother-in-law about the same problem he had yesterday. And so he's, well, I, I begin, and he began to talk about his problems. And I said, no, no, you can't go there. You can't go. I told you not to go there. It's a process. So what was really cool, we did a, uh, a proxy prayer to Father because he just got saved yesterday, and it's a process, and he doesn't probably understand a whole lot of things. He doesn't understand how much God loves him. So I just opened the door to my Father, and it was so awesome that all of a sudden I turned the floor over to him, and I said, now you talk to God. And he started talking to my Father, and he repented, and he asked for forgiveness. And it was so awesome, and I had some people that just... My brother, my son-in-law, he's like a brother to me. If he ever calls me daddy, don't call me daddy. I'm your brother, man. But uh, my daughter was in there, and man, he just broke down talking to Father. And then the next thing, I said, okay, great, that's awesome, man. You, you've repented, and that's just amazing, and that's heartfelt. I said, but let's get you delivered. Let's, let's shut the door on Satan. So then we got him delivered. I laid my hands on him, and I cast out those fear, spirits of fear and anxiety. And it was... It was awesome. So it was like a boom, boom, boom. I mean, it was just, it was, it was so awesome. Here's the thing that I go at. How many of us, when he says, well, just keep me in your prayers, and you're like, wow, he's got some problems. Yeah, okay, man, I'm going to keep you in my prayers. I'll go back to work. Get on back to out of here. Get it. He works with me. You know, and time's clicking. I need time is money. I need to get everybody to work. But no, it's discipleship. It's taking time. You got to spend time with people. You know, there's a difference between a healing and a deliverance. And sometimes you can just do a healing and go. But when it's a deliverance and it's some spirits that are on you, and you've got you to gotta feel the love. you got to have somebody to show you love. You know, it's hard to give love if you don't have it. <laughs> so I'm just telling you, it's cool. And it, can I spend my whole day doing that? I don't know. I, I do have a job and responsibility to customers that pay me to do a job for them. And, but sometimes you got to say stop, you know. <laughs> and it was awesome, man. So anyway, I, he's going to be fine because I'm going to keep pouring into him. It's a, proce it's a process. I've been on it for 11 years with my father. It's a process. I just thought I'd share that. That sometimes we, just, we, need, to, we need to recognize and we need to know the relationship that our father has for us. And we just got to show the love. We just got to speak the love into somebody. And, and when they get to that point, be there for them. And then, and then get them to talk to father. Get them to show that it's just not a religion. It's no religion. It's relationship. My father loves me. All right, my friends, that's uh, four minutes and 52 seconds. If you've hung in this long, what are you doing? You need to be at work or something, shouldn't you? <laughs> I know Jesus loves us.